I had rain after losing my first daughter. She was three months old and I lost her unexpectedly. And I really just didn't want to live anymore just because it was so hard. And I was so young when I had her, like right out of high school. And I went to go get on birth control and I'm pregnant with rain. And so that gave me a reason to keep living. I was young I would, and that pregnancy is like, you know, like when there's a storm and rain and she was kind of like my rainbow after the storm because I lost my first child and rain gave me a reason to live. I'm Rain's dad. Uh, I, uh, Rain uh, was three years old when Carla and I met. Um, she was four when we were married. Um, so I've, I've never introduced myself as her stepfather. I've raised her since she was three years old. So I'm, I'm Rain's dad. Rain was always mature for her age. Kind of had an old soul, always, you know, smart, academically, socially, uh, always made friends. She was like a really giving person. Like she would, everything she did, like she'd always be giving. Like she never had a lot, but she'd always want to give. I remember we would go up to her job sometimes and she could, she like made this new drink and she wanted me to try it. Or there's like some homeless man that always come to her job and she'd pay him just to take out the trash. Even if sometimes he wouldn't even come, she would still pay him. Even though she didn't even have a lot of money on her own, she was just really giving. Brain loved to sing. She loved animals. She was incredibly smart. Her kindergarten teacher used to tell me that, well, she was the only one that could read in kindergarten. And um, she was an incredible artist, but she was just kind, loving, funny, and she was just always smiling. She was, I don't know, she was just like a bright light in every room. Mm -hmm. She loved cheer. She was a cheerleader ever since she was little. She was actually about to try out for college cheer, but um, she loved cheer and art. She had a lot of dreams, a lot of aspirations, um, and there's nothing she couldn't achieve. She was just so smart. She didn't even have to study. I mean, she she was going to be able to accomplish anything she wanted to accomplish. She was always on the honor roll. Always would when we did, there was state testing. She'd always sc score in the top, you know, five percent, ten percent. She was always at the top of kids' her age. She was an amazing writer. And I'm like, I'm not just saying that because she's my child. Like I've had teachers contact me and she would win awards. She was just, she was extremely smart. One time her teacher told me that the story she wrote was worthy of being published. Um, and her artwork was beautiful. And actually, shortly before Rain passed away, I had asked her to help me write a children's book and illustrate it. And she's like, Mom, I'd love to. So now when I do it, I'm going to dedicate it to her. The biggest hole in this family the, that is never going to be filled is, is everything she meant to, to her little brother and sisters. Uh, she was, the only really way I can explain it is she was their third parent. She, she loved them like a parent. She, uh, they looked up to her like another parent and, you know, that that's something that uh, that's something that's never going to be replaced. She grew up in a beautiful young lady. It's a tragedy, and I'm probably most worried about since this has happened. I mean, I've, I I'm having other issues too besides this, but since this happened, Carla, every day I've been talking to her, and she's always tells me, "Dad, I don't want to live anymore." So like now I just have to try to navigate life without her and I just can't imagine like how, how we're going to do it. It's been, what, two and a half months? I don't know. I don't even know, like time. It was in, at the end of May, but I'm scared now for her birthday that's coming up in October. Like I'm just, it's all scary and it's like hard too because even going to the grocery store when I see things that she would like to eat, I just... 
I just start crying at the grocery store because I can't buy her those things anymore. And um, when she came for Easter, I got all the kids an Easter basket, and even rain. And I had no idea that was going to be the last Easter basket I ever made for her. I just, it's just really hard. Rain, like I said, oh God, I miss her so bad. Uh, and at the viewing, Carla got a Rain's dog, and she idolizes that dog now because it's the last part of Rain there is. And uh, at the viewing, the dog was there, and it kept wanting to jump, jump into the casket. You know, mm. it's just it's a shame, it's a total shame. Her dog Mars is was her baby. She threw Mars birthday like. When Mars turned one, she gave her a birthday party. Mars is a sheep a doodle. And she even posted on her Instagram that she feels like God made Mars just for her. But I think he made him made Mars for me too, because I have her too. I have Mars now. And I always like just feel Rain's love in that dog. Hey guys, my name's Rain. I'm twenty nine years old and currently my major is Allied Health. And I say currently because I feel like I'm going to end up changing it. I'm just so interested in a lot of different things. So I guess a little bit more about myself is I am actually pretty proud of myself for this, but I did just get my first apartment. And as you could probably tell, I love to paint. And this is my doggy. It's, I don't know. This is my doggy Mars. She's just so cute. And it's just me and her right now. But we're doing great. And this is one of the reasons I chose to do online classes because I'm also working and I, I I'm already don't like leaving her home alone. So, so I don't think I could have gone to in-person classes and also I would have just felt way too bad for leaving her. But yeah, that's a little bit about me. She dated a guy on and off since she was about 14 or 15. They would always like get back together and break up. Well, when we moved to San Antonio, we had orders here. It was during COVID and it was her senior year. And she was kind of, it was just depressing. You know, she didn't know anybody and the schools here are huge. So she graduated a little bit early and went back to Oklahoma. Like we have family there and that's where the, the guy was. And then, um, you know, she was working there for a while, and then he joined the Navy. And um, she was, like I said, she was in school and working, and when he joined the Navy, it was finally time to go. And um, I was, like, hesitant about letting her go. She was like, well, I'm going to try out for the cheer team in Norfolk State. Um, but she was still doing her college there in Oklahoma. She just did online and it was in the summer. It was just May 27th of 2023 is when I lost rain, but she was about to start summer classes and she just chose to do them online because she knew that since he joined the Navy that they were going to, she was going to go with him to Virginia. And she left to Virginia. Like I said, we talked on the phone all the time texted like literally we were best friends and the last time I had I saw rain she came down for my five-year-old's birthday they were extremely close rain always told me the happiest day of her life was the day Ivy was born my five-year-old and um she came down brought her some presents and helped me with the birthday rain went to church with me on Easter Sunday and when she said bye I told her I'd be back up to visit her. But I gave her a hug and I watched her. I just watched her drive away and I watched her leave and I was waving to her and I had no idea that was gonna be the last time I saw her alive. <sighs> but we, like I said, that was in April, April. So we were still talking all the time and texting and calling, like I said, all the time. And I told her I was going to come visit her um, before they left to go to Virginia. But, you know, things got busy, and 
with life. And it's kind of, it's not a long drive, but it's like six or seven hours sometimes. So I said, you know what, instead of us coming up there, I'll just come see you in Virginia and we can all go to the beach. And she said, okay. And so before she left to Virginia, you know, we, we have TRICARE. It's in, like the insurance that we have. Um, she asked me to set her up with a doctor appointment. So she was going to a counselor while she was there. And the doctor there prescribed her um, a beta blocker as an anxiety med. It's like used off label. And she really didn't like the way it made her feel. So she had only been on it for a couple of weeks, but it made her, she just really got super tired with that. And anyway, so she had her counseling appointment and went to Virginia and there was no lodging available on base. So they stayed at a hotel off base. And I think they were like arguing a lot. Um, but then again, like rain had never been that far physically from me. And I think that was hard. And she kept saying she just wanted to come home. Um, and I was, you know, I told her, and she actually even asked me, okay, can you switch my TRICARE to, or can you switch my insurance where I can use it here and find, help me find a doctor? Cause I don't like the anxiety meds I'm on. And I just want to, you know, find a counselor here and a doctor here. And I said, okay, we'll get on that when probably next week or whenever you guys find an apartment. So I was trying to help her find an apartment and I talked to her um, May 26th a few times and I asked her how she was doing and she's like, not very good. She was just kind of down, but she's like, I'll be okay. And I had just taken Ivy to the movies and she was asking me about that. And um, that night, um, probably 10 o'clock my time, 11 o'clock her time, we were texting. Um, she's like, I got to do my schoolwork. And she was going to talk to me tomorrow and I told her I loved her and it's weird because that night I was going for a walk and I just like had this urge to pray for her pray for my kids but really rain like I had her on my heart and I prayed and the next morning I get a call and it's Ethan and he's screaming and I'm like what's going on what's going on and he's like um rain's not waking up and I'm like what and I'm like do CPR he's like Rain, Rain, wake up. And I said, call 911. He's already did. And the I'm on the phone with him when the paramedics come. And they're like, she's gone. And I'm like, what happened? Like, tell me what happened. She can't be gone. I'm like, I just talked to her. And he said that last night when she was up doing her schoolwork, he went, she said they were hungry and he went to go get her food. And Rain automatically, I guess, locked the top lock of the hotel door because she just just automatically would lock the deadbolt as a young girl. And when she lived in her apartment, she did that. And he went to get her Arby's and I guess it was closed. So he said, Hey, it's, he called her and he said, she sounded very tired. And, um, he said, I'm going to go to waffle house. And she just sounded really tired, but she told him what she wanted. And he said he was there. And then he texted her, I'm on my way. And he said that she read it, but didn't respond. He said he was probably gone maybe a total of 45 minutes and he couldn't get back in the hotel door. And he went to the front desk of the hotel and said, hey, I can't get in my room. Can you guys get me in? Because Rain wasn't answering the phone or the knocks at the door. And uh, they said, well, maintenance has the, I guess, the key to get in or the way to get in through the door and they won't be back till 8 a.m. And he's like, okay, well, I need to get in. And he kept knocking and then he went back to the front desk and said, hey, is there any way you can call them? Like, I need to get in the room. And then um, he was just knocking on the door a bunch. And uh, then he went and he just assumed she fell asleep because he said she sounded tired and he knew that her medicine made her tired. And he just assumed she fell asleep. And when the detective showed up, he, well, I guess, the maintenance opened the door and he found rain like that. And he said, she was just laying there on the bed with her schoolwork open. I woke up in the morning and my uh, mom, she was on the phone with my sister's husband and I heard her like, and she was like very like, it was yelling. That's how I woke up. I woke up to yelling and like all this, I was really confused. She was on the phone with him and just, he was calling her, telling him that rain wouldn't wake up. And she was like, 
very cold. And then the police were on their way. And then, like, a couple minutes later, they told her she was gone. And that's how I found out. I woke up Sunday morning where I got a text. And it said, Rain's dead. I'm done. So, within that hour, no, I live in Oklahoma City. I'm on my way to uh, San Antonio. And uh, just, just tough. Yeah. I was deployed. Um, I was actually in the Middle East. I was on a one-year deployment. I was about seven months through on a 12-month deployment. Um, I had just left home from being home on my six-month R&R. Um, so I'd been back about two weeks. So I was almost like six and a half, six and a half months in. Um, getting ready to finish that second half of my deployment in the Middle East. Um, it's about an eight or nine hour time difference. So Saturday morning here for me was around uh, 17, 1800 um, on a Saturday there. Of course, I'm deployed. We work, I worked every day but Sunday. So I worked kind of a second shift type hours over there to align with higher headquarters we had back here in the States. So with that being said, dinner time there was kind of like my lunch, so to speak. Um, so I worked in a, in a bunker actually. So no cell phone, no Wi-Fi coverage. Um, so I noticed when I went to the chow hall, uh, you know, my phone started going off like crazy. Um, I'm getting, uh, all these messages and I'm, I'm not understanding what's going on. I'm like, you know, they were all just, Hey, you need to call quick. You need to get in from my wife will say, Hey, you've got to get home. But none of them were very clear on what was going on. And I think the first one that came through that was uh, kind of explaining to me what was going on was the one from my 11 um, year old son, Noah. And uh, it simply just said, uh, Dad, Rain's dead. My dad was deployed at the time. Uh, my brother was there, my little brother. He's not here today, though. He was still asleep, but I had to wake him up and tell him. I don't think he really, like, understood, but he's not really good at expressing his feelings, but yeah. I could tell he's hurt. Brain has two sisters and a brother, and she has an older sister that died at three months old. So I just sat there and looked at, I couldn't believe, coming from him, coming from, I, I didn't understand. I kind of was in a conversation with my, with, you know, my comrades, my coworkers, and I wasn't really understanding what's this phone going off for. I'm, you know, my mindset is on the mission. My mindset is what's going on over there. So I was halfway not paying attention to what was going on. Uh, even though I got the mess, my wife said, you got to come home and take care of these kids. I didn't know if somebody, if the kids were getting on our nerves or whatever. Um, but when I read the message from Noah, from his phone, dad, it's just what it said. Dad brings dad. And I think that's the one that's what sticks with me. And, um, I uh, immediately got to uh, a place where I could call. And uh, once I called, uh, there seemed to be still a lot of confusion. I couldn't understand what my wife was saying. What ha What has happened? What's this message I received from Noah? And... Uh, you know, that's when I received confirmation on, on what had happened, and I didn't know, and it seemed like no one understood what was going on at that time. Oh, okay, what What do you mean, Rain's dead? Uh, and it still was not registering with me. Uh, someone had to get on the phone because my wife was 
obviously in a, in a situation where she couldn't talk. She couldn't really explain anything clearly to me at all. Um, and then, um, when I actually talked to her, her husband, she had only been married. They'd been married only a few months. He got stationed, uh, he's Navy, Navy guy stationed in Norfolk. Uh, they hadn't been there very long. And I talked to him. I finally got a phone that was able to reach out to him. So I was like, where? And I remember, because I know it wasn't registering with me, because my the first thing I said to him was, where, where's Rain? You know, and he, he paused for a while, and he's like confused because he couldn't understand why I was asking him that, I remember. And I was like, where's Rain? You know, let me talk to Rain. He's like, she's not here. And, um, you know, I think that was when um, I remember the first thing I told, you know, and the, the individuals with me is like, man, my whole life just changed. I keep asking Ethan questions. I'm like, hey, like, was there anything like off that day? Or he said, well, she did tell me that she when she was walking Mars, she met a couple and they like seemed young and they seemed nice and they offered her like they said, hey, we have weed or whatever. And he said, I told her not to take it. Um, and she said she wouldn't just because, you know, he's in the military and she's in school. And um, she's wanting to try out for cheer. So he's like, no, just don't take anything. And I was like, OK. And he said that she told him that she ran into them again when she was walking Mars. I guess they were hanging out at the pool at that hotel. And so she must have talked to them a few times, but since they they offered her weed, um, I was like, did they have anything else? Or, like, did she say anything? And he said, yeah, they said that they have weed, weed and other things, but Rain said she didn't, you know, didn't take anything or didn't buy anything from them. And he said, you know, I didn't, I just thought that's what it was. And um, I even asked the detective, I said, hey, he said there was a couple there. Can you check that out? Because I was always calling the detective, trying to find out, like, hey, did the medical examiner report come back? Do you, have you heard anything? He goes, yeah, he mentioned the couple, but they're gone. So I don't, I don't think that's what, I searched the room. I didn't see anything. Um, I don't think she got anything from that couple. Then I started kind of feeling like, well, it's either the medicine or there was something else. And, um, I got the medical examiner's report back, and they said it was fentanyl poisoning. And I'm like, what? And they said, yes, but it was a Xanax. She thought she was taking a Xanax, and it was very little Xanax. So um, it was one pill. The medical examiner said that's all that was in her system was the Xanax laced with fentanyl. And she said it had two and a half times the lethal minimum lethal dose of fentanyl and very little Xanax. And she said that um, they just look like the real thing and Rain just assumed she was taking a Xanax. And it kind of makes sense because she was telling me that she wanted to change her anxiety meds. Um, and I know she was depressed, you know, and she missed, missed her family, hated being that far away. And I don't know, I just, I think that maybe feeling down she resorted to taking something from someone she didn't know and she probably thought you know this you know she did say the couple was young so she, she probably they probably gained her trust but she knows what a xanax looks like um like i said she's been on anxiety medication before so she just assumed that's what she was taking and um so that night when i talked to her that was, I didn't know this was going to be the last time I talked to her, but she went to sleep not knowing she wasn't going to wake up in the morning. And I asked the medical examiner, I said, well, did it, what did she feel? Like, I keep thinking in my head, like, at, did she realize, hey, this really isn't a Xanax. This, I feel weird. And I kept thinking, like, did she think about her mom? Like, I'm like, did she think, oh, no, I don't, I'm not going to see my mom or you know, or was she calling out for help or, but she can't move. I don't know. But she said she probably just went to sleep and didn't realize what was going on. These controlled substances have very serious side effects, which include, but are not limited to drowsiness, fatigue, dizziness, 
mental fog, and in very serious cases, death. And actually, not really in very serious cases, because even a small, small amount of fentanyl can kill you, and it's very, very scary. And this is an epidemic killing millions of people and teens. It's a growing problem in the United States. I still don't understand. Uh, I mean, I've been educated now about fentanyl when the toxicology report came back. And, um, you know, I think the most frustrating part to me is, in the, is the lack of awareness because until you're, you're in this, unfortunately, until you're in this circle, until it's happened to your child, you don't know. And, you know, I was guilty of that before. I heard of fentanyl. I didn't understand the impact. I didn't understand the severity of this uh, issue in America. And I do now, unfortunately, because you know, I'm a fentanyl parent now. Um, but I think it's frustrating to me to have to, uh, and I know individuals, they don't mean any harm when they ask what's happened. You know, they don't understand. You know, it's not a drug overdose. It's not that she was a bad person that was doing something she shouldn't have done. She was taking something that she thought was gonna help her. She thought she was taking a Xanax, you know, just a single Xanax, and uh, that's, that's what did it. Guess it had two and a half times the potency to kill somebody of, you know, fentanyl and, you know. Yeah. Terrible, terrible. That one pill not only destroyed, I mean, like, for I, I, the detective said sometimes it's about $15, $20, but that one pill destroyed many lives because her siblings are struggling. And me, if it wasn't for her siblings, I, would, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be able to do it because Rain was my best friend. We were so close. She was a part of my soul. Like, I can't explain it. It's like part of my soul has gone. And um, her name was Rain, so I I was angry with God, you know, for a little bit. I was like, why God her? Why her? She's so kind. She's so loving. There's so many mean, evil people in this world. Why my baby? Why? And I said, I have to know she's okay. I'm like, just tell me she's okay. And so I was, and I was even saying, I was like, show me a rainbow, God. Just show me something. And this was right before her funeral. And... Um, my family was there, and about 15 minutes later, my 14-year-old says, Mom, come outside, come outside. In my backyard was a huge, perfect rainbow. And I had never seen a rainbow since we lived in San Antonio. And then her name's Rain. So I'm like, okay, God, she's okay. She's with you. And so I've had all, like, so many people message me with rainbows, and I ended up getting a tattoo for Rain. And it's a rainbow, and it's her with her curly hair, and then her doodle with the curly hair on a swing. Because that dog was her everything, and I don't know, I'm just, like, struggling to survive every day. Like, I don't, I don't know, like, how to keep going. Like, I always told Rain, and this was recently, I told her, I said, God has big plans for you. Because she was, you know, like I said, she was depressed and had anxiety, and I was like, God has big plans for you. I know it. And then when she passed away, I felt like I lied to her because she was gone. But now I'm like, maybe if I can use what happened to her to save somebody else, maybe, maybe, um, then that is a big thing to save someone else's life. Because I don't understand how. I just don't, like, it still hasn't sunk in that my sister's gone, but. It's just really hard because, like, this is, I've never lost anyone close to me. So this is, like, the first time. <laughs> she meant a, a whole lot to me. And uh, um, I don't think it's understood. And uh, But that's okay because as long as I know, um, that's all it. She knows.
and I know she knows. And uh, I think that's all that matters. But, uh, you know, I know where she's at. And I think that's the thing that keeps me going. You know, she gave her life to Christ on two different occasions. And um, and that's the, uh, that's the only comfort that, that we do have. But, man, um, it's tough. It hurts. It's still a shock. It's still, I'm still numb, and it still doesn't seem real. I plan to find out who did this. I'm going to find out one way or another. And they're going to have to pay because they stole the most important person in my life. And all the hopes and dreams she had. And like I said, she was the kindest, kindest person you'd ever meet. I mean, I have so many messages on my Facebook and text of stories about how kind Rain was and how she was just made everybody feel loved and how her smile would light up a room.